So we're still dealing with this whole notion of our first phase of this teaching, and that's the sound mind. That's what we want to deal with first. How sound is your mind. As I told you before, God first totally re-engineers your heart. He makes your heart new. But then it's a, a renewal of the mind that God is after. And that's the entire emphasis of this Bible study is how are you renewing your mind? And the absence of it means you're stagnant. That's one of those sea lie moments. I want you to pause and think about it. If you're not intentionally doing things to renew your mind, you're stagnant. And inevitably, you're going to fall back. The adversary is quick to try to destroy the credibility to God. And he wants to do it with God's people by confusion. We're going to get to that. We did a little bit of it last week. We're going to get a little bit more into that this week. And so we talked about this principle that it is a long-term process. It's a part that there is participation on both parties, that God has a part, you have a part, and neither party has the responsibility to do the other party's behalf, uh, part. As I said, gave the simple il illustration, God can bless you with a scholarship. One of our members' daughters just got a $5,000 scholarship. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But you know what? You know what? As you clap, praise God. But if she doesn't use what God has given to her, to utilize that blessing, there won't be any other scholarship money. In fact, it would be a slap in the face on the favor of God if you don't take advantage through hard work of what God has put into your disposal, put into your purview. Sometimes God puts things right there in front of you, and he wants to see what are you going to do. That's why we're going to talk about this seed in the ground. And so there are things that you must do, and there are things that only God can do, and you can't do what God can do, and God will not do what you should do because he gave you the responsibility to do it. Say amen. And so we already talked about that the seed is the word of God, and we talked about this seed contains the nutrients and the energy in it of itself to be able to produce with your assistance. Why? Why is it your assistance? Because... The seed is the word of God, but the seed of word, uh, the word of God, the seed of the word of God must be planted. And where is the word of God planted? In your heart. Note, I didn't say necessarily in your mind. I'll clarify that in a moment because things can come in and out of your mind. You know that just by dreams and things. Some of you all had dreams. I don't know about you, but I've had dreams and I wake up and what was I dreaming about? What was that? And because I didn't write it down, I forgot it. It came into my mind, but it was fleeting. Sometimes you can think things, and it's just like a brilliant idea. You ever had one of those? And then it's gone. Just like that. And so just because it's in your, your mind does not mean that it will be retained in your mind. Why? Because you have to do some intentional things to retain it. What is that? you got to plant it. And you got to plant it where? in your heart. Think about it. When you say, I remember that, and you say, how do you remember it? I remember it by heart. What does that mean? I remember it by heart. Well, that means that you embedded it, right? Some of y'all remember your first telephone number. You certainly remember your first girlfriend or boyfriend's name. You mean I remember where they live, <laughs> and some of y'all remember that. And you certainly remember some of the escapades. I'll leave it there. Why? Because it's in your heart. It's in your heart. And so what I'm saying to you is what makes you think the word of God is any different? The word of God will not give the residual benefit to you or me unless it's deeply embedded in our hearts. And so I want to come back to that for a moment. In your slide, it talks about the word of God being, or at least the word of God in Hebrews chapter 4 and 12, rather, uh, speaks to the fact that the word of God is quick, which means it's living. The word of God is active. 
just like that seed that goes in the ground is living, it's active. When that seed maturates or meets with that, that moist dirt in the ground, it takes on the property of its own. It's living. The nutrients and the energy go forth and it penetrates, the word of God says, and divides even to soul and spirit and joint and marrow. It's the discerner and the thoughts of the thoughts and the intent of the heart's desires. And one of the things that I think is so important, I need you all to go there to Isaiah chapter 55, verse number 10. We're talking about the inner working power of the word of God. And I'm trying to give you the motivation and with all the passion that I can muster up as to why you must make it an intentional effort on a daily basis to study or to be in the word of God. If you can't do it daily, do it weekly, but do it as a norm, as a practice, just as you brush your teeth as a norm, just as you wash your face, face as a norm. The word of God is pivotal to the transformation of your life. When we talk about transforming lives by walking in the power of the word, how is that even possible if, not, uh, if you are not spending time so that the word of God can transform you? That's what the whole point of the message of walking in the power of the word is with respect to our vision. So I ask you to go to Isaiah chapter 55 because I wanted you to see, I said it, uh, remember I said you remember things by heart. When I was uh, teaching the word of God, I was standing down there uh, last Wednesday and uh, I was speaking to you uh, spontaneously and extemporaneously, if I can get that out of my mouth, from what was in my heart. But I want you to see it from looking at the word of God yourself because there's some principles here that the word of God garners and makes known in your life when you grasp them. Say amen. Now, look at this. He says, first he, he, he develops it by saying, my ways are not your ways. Neither are my thoughts your thoughts. And then he gives illustration. For as... The heavens are high above the earth. He's contrasting now. So are my ways above your ways and thoughts above your thoughts. Now, I want you to watch this now because the prophet is trying to demonstrate to you the productivity of the earth and he's using that illustratively to the power of the word. And I want you to think about this because it has nothing to do with the ability of your mind. It has everything to do with the power of the seed and a willingness of the heart to receive the word of God. 